Hi everybody, I'm Christy with Thrift Addict and I want to welcome you to my channel. If you're new here, I appreciate you stopping by. And if you're returning, I appreciate you coming back. My channel is mainly about reselling and I'm a part-time seller on Poshmark and eBay. I've been on eBay for a few years and Poshmark not quite a year, so it's still fairly new to me. And I might be branching out on another app called Kitizen, which is for kid clothes. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is just me documenting my journey and kind of how I do things, what I've learned in the process, and I'm sharing it with you in hopes that it can help you if you are interested in reselling yourself. Maybe it's you have just some things lying around the house that you'd like to get rid of now that we're all kind of quarantined at home. I noticed a lot of people, a lot of my friends have been posting on Facebook. They're cleaning out their closets and their house and they're selling things on Facebook. Maybe this is a new avenue for you and that's why you clicked on this video. So basically I'm going to go through my what sold on eBay and Poshmark in the month of March. Again, this is my part-time job, and even though I'm a teacher and we are not in school, we're still working from home, so I'm still doing this part-time. Um, life has slowed down a bit, though. You know, we don't have our activities going on. My kids, um, you know, aren't going to dance or, or sports, so life has definitely slowed down. Um, I'm grateful that my sales haven't slowed down. I did have a goal this month to double what I made last month. Well, I had a goal in March to double what I made in February, and that's before the whole pandemic hit. And so I'm kind of giving myself a little grace that that did not take place. And, you know, I have small shops. I've got like 200 or less listings in both of my um shops so that kind of gives you an idea of how much I have in my store I don't so let's recap in January just to kind of give you an idea what my sales are like I made about six hundred dollars um, on both platforms that's profit um, not gross sales so that's after uh, fees and after my cost of goods was taken out um, didn't have very many listings at that point so I thought that was pretty good because sales picked up after Christmas like two days after Christmas they kind of went up for me um, they were almost non-existent before that because I got really busy and I wasn't working the business um, February it went up to $800 and then for March it was $900 so again that's profit and that's kind of what I'm gonna go over with you. So I'm gonna break down both platforms so you can see what the profit was from each platform. This month it kind of flip-flopped. I had more profit on Poshmark and less on eBay. Last month um, it was opposite of that. So I had $473.60 in profit on Poshmark. That was for 24 items. Well, 25 if you count the one I sold the, from my own closet. I have an average sale cost of $19.73, I think is what that says. And my cost of goods was only $3.83. So that's a pretty good cost um, of goods. On eBay, I had $406.19, and that was my profit. I had 16 items. Again, one item uh, was also something from my home, so 17 items. My average sale was $25.30, and my cost of goods was a little more at $4.43. So that came out to $879.79. And then if you add in the extra money from the items from my home, kind of basically I made some of my money back on something I bought, then it would be um, over $900. So that's where the $900 came from. Okay, well, I am actually going to start with eBay today because eBay is kind of interesting. It's not only clothes, which Poshmark, I prim primarily sell clothes. I have a few home goods on there, but that's it. eBay, I kind of do everything. Um, lately, I've been putting cross-listing on um, Vindu, if you've ever heard of that. It's an app that helps you cross-list faster. And I cross-listed a lot of my clothes onto eBay so I could have more items because eBay was giving away like all these free listings. So why not just start throwing some stuff on there? Because I don't typically uh, like selling clothes on eBay, but it's actually done really well. 
Okay, so let's start off. I didn't have a sale on eBay until March 5th, but it was a good sale only because it was a pair of sandals I had previously purchased um, like when I first got started um, deciding to sell on Poshmark. I was buying more clothing and shoes to sell and I paid $5 for these sandals because they were like in new condition and I thought that the brand was good and it's okay but they sat for all this time. So when someone offered me $20, I took it. It was the Rock and Republic black sandals with the silver studs. Kind of a very specific buyer for those, I guess. Um, so I sold those for $20. I paid five. After fees, I made a little over $12 on those, which is still pretty good, but I wouldn't pick them up again. They took too long to sell and they were in great condition. So um, I can't imagine them selling quicker. The next sale were some page jeans. And again, I had always heard page jeans are good. So I picked them up maybe a few months into my journey. So I've had them for quite some time and I listed them kind of maybe around the $30 mark on Poshmark and there was no interest. So someone came, someone came along on eBay and offered me $15 and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move them out for that. Um, I thought they would sell for more, but they didn't. I let them go. I think I probably paid $6 for those. And so in the end, I only made $7 profit because $15 sale. And then eBay takes, um, there is about 13% unless you do promoted listings. Those two items were not on promoted listings. The next one, however, was a promoted listing. And what that is, is you can pay an extra percentage and you get to pick your percentage to promote your listing more on eBay. That means eBay will bump your item up and show it to buyers. If they're searching for something similar or they're looking at other items similar, it will yours will kind of pop up um, on the under part or pop to the top of the list based on what percentage uh, you choose. You can go as high as you want, I think. I only do 2%. That way, when in the end, if something sells on promoted listing, I can kind of say, well, 15% is what I paid for that sale, um, the fee for that sale, if that makes any sense. Okay, so this was an anthropology. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it was new. It still had the button tag in there and stuff. Um, and I saw when I first picked it up at Goodwill, I think I paid six bucks for that. Mm -hmm, that's how much I paid. I paid six bucks for it. And I noticed that they had sold for about $50 on Poshmark. So I thought, okay, this will be great. Well, it's sad. It didn't get a lot of attention and I marked it down a little bit. And then finally somebody came along and offered me $30 for it. I think I sent out offers to interested buyers and then they countered and I accepted the $30 because I thought that was fair. And in the end, I made $19 and 50 cents. So it was still a really good sell. It just took quite some time to sell. Okay. These shoes, these were really nice. I bought these. Um, I knew they were good quality, but I hadn't really heard much about the brand. You're probably thinking, um, that's silly because people have talked about this before, but it's Vionic. I just knew they were nice and I actually picked them up at the thrift store for myself a while back and they were really too small, but I was going to try to make them work because sometimes you can, you know, wear half size up or half size down, but these, they did not feel very good on my feet when I wore them. Um, and they're supposed to be a comfort sandal. So they were too small for me. I wish I could find my size. I could have, waited for a higher offer because I think I could have gotten more out of them. However, somebody offered me 35 and I kind of thought about it. You know, you have so many hours to accept their offer and I thought about it, kind of slept on it. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and let it go. That was on like the eighth. Um, and I only paid, I think I paid $7.99 for these. So that was a little bit higher than some shoes I buy. But in the end, I made $22.45, and they were really cute, little green ballet flats. Okay, the next item is, um, it's called Theory Roboton, 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 I don't know how you pronounce that either. Um, but when I saw them, I thought, I think I've heard of these before. I have no idea where I heard of them but the name was very familiar. Maybe I've found some and looked them up before. I don't remember, but the name was familiar. I thought, I think this is something, I think they were even, are they Italian? I don't remember. 
However, they were going for a pretty good amount from $40 to $60. These shoes, I think they're um, like a comfort shoe and these were a loafer. Um, and I didn't have them listed that long and a lady sent me an offer and I countered because it was lower than I wanted and she countered back and then I counted. Finally, we settled on $45. I think I had them listed for like 60. So we settled on $45 and um, I was good with that because I paid $5 for these. So in the end, I made $34. But if you ever see that brand, you know, look up the style because I think different styles, you know, will go for different prices. I did have um, a sale that somebody sent me an offer and I accepted their offer and then they didn't pay. <laughs> you know, that's happening a lot more lately, so I'm not sure what's going on, but it's relisted. But it was a super cute dress. Okay. This is another hot roller sale I've talked about in some of my other videos and my haul videos that I like to pick up hot rollers. So these were not vintage. Vintage is what I normally pick up. These were actually just the big chunky ones and a lot of pageant mamas and dancers and cheer uh, cheerleaders, they get them for like competitions and stuff because they like the big curled hair. And so um, I only sold these for $19.95 and I probably had five or six dollars in them. So in the end, I only made like $11. I think when I first picked them up, I maybe looked them up and um, maybe I didn't check the like sold listings. I don't know. But they weren't worth, worth as much as I thought they would be worth. My next sale was on March 13th and this was a vintage Chris Gunnason. I never know how to pronounce that, but I've, this is the third one of these moo-moos or um, house dresses as you would call them that I've picked up. And I got really excited because it's been a while since I've seen one. The first one I ever picked up, I, it was on like the dollar rack at my local thrift shop and it was a couple of years ago and it was faded and I just thought there's something to this. It's thick and it looks different. And sure enough, I grabbed it for a buck or it might've been a fill a bag. I don't remember and sold it for like 35 or 40 dollars in not that great of condition and then the second one i picked up still sold it for pretty good money and it had some spots on it so and they sold fast so this one i picked up it was in much better condition and i think it was like an extra large so i thought it was going to sell quickly and it actually sat a little bit it did get interest right away and i don't know what if maybe this is dying off, this was a trend and it's starting to die off, um, which I guess can happen, but I thought it's a vintage thing and maybe people love them and they always buy them. Um, but yeah, it's it didn't go for as much as I thought it would. It actually, somebody sent me an offer for 30 and I, so I decided to go ahead and accept that. Um, and I think I paid $5 for it. So in the end, I made $21.50, which is still a good sale, but um, I just had higher hopes because it was in better condition. And maybe it was the print. I don't know. The next one was a Anthropology Maeve yellow top and it had horses on it. It was a button up and it was just really adorable. And although I thought it was going to sell quick because it had this novelty print on it, it did not. It sat since I think I got it back in like June. Or July I found it at the thrift store so I probably only paid $3.99 for it um, I thought it would sell for like $30 and it's just been sitting on Poshmark so I cross-listed it they offered me $18 for it and it got attention on Poshmark people asked questions and um, and you know liked it I just could never you know <laughs> sell it. So in the end, I was like, okay, t I'll take $18. So in the end, I made $11.66. So I was glad to see that go. My next sell, I didn't include in my total because it was a book I purchased to get certified in PE. It sold on promoted listing. So that means my fee was probably 15%. I sold it for $29.95 and I probably bought this, gosh, it's been seven years maybe or more. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been around the house for a while and I haven't needed it since then. So I decided to sell it. So I got my money back. I probably paid 20 to 30. I don't know. 
Oh my goodness, I was so glad to see this top go. It was really cute though. I bought it when I was only doing eBay. So I bought it way back and probably looked the comps on eBay and the comps were good. It's an anthropology fig and flower boho top. And I've heard some people have really good luck with these, but they said in the plus sizes that um, they do well. But this one was a medium and it just sat and sat. And although, you know, before I had better lighting and had pick tap go to make my pictures look better, um, I had photographed this on my Mac and then it was kind of yellowy, the picture. And I just didn't think the pictures looked good. So I finally took better photos a couple months ago and relisted it. It still sat and then sold for $16. When somebody sent me that offer, I was like, yes please take it. And then I got good feedback. So I was glad about that. So in the end, it was a good sale. Um, I made $9 and 92 cents, but literally, I mean, could have been over two years. I don't know. It's been quite some time. I've had that top. I was getting ready to just keep it for myself. <laughs> That's how long it was. Okay, the next sale was my best sale on both platforms, and it was a vintage Martha's Miniatures um, little ruffle dress that's super popular, the Martha, Martha's Miniatures vintage dresses. Um, this is the third one I've had. I still have one in my shop, and, and the first one I picked up was back in like April or May, and it sold for $225, which now I'm kind of thinking I've probably had it listed kind of low because it sold within... 30 minutes, I think. This one didn't sell as fast as I was expecting it to. I shared it on Instagram, you know, and that's what I did the last time. And immediately though, as I listed this, I started getting offers rolling in. And I had three offers within 30 minutes and I thought, oh yes, here we go. Um, the first one I had, it sold like right off the bat with no offers. I think, actually, I, I take that back. Someone did send me an offer, but then someone else purchased it before I could even respond to the offer. Um, this one, I started getting offers right away um, for like 100 or around that mark. Um, and I kind of just let those ride overnight into the next day. And I think I had like 10 offers by the next day. At that point, I decided, okay, no one's taking um, full price for this. I think I had it listed 195 And I was like, okay, so I'm going to counter offer to all these people now. So I began counter offering. And then while I was counter offering, um, I think that might have been like 180 or 175 I was counter offering. Someone sent me an offer. Someone else sent me an offer for 168 And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to counter offer on that because we're like $10 apart. I'm going to accept this one. And I did think about it for a little bit because I kind of like sit on it and think maybe somebody will come in and scoop it up for full price. Um, so I kind of sat on it for a little bit. And then when it started to get closer to the offer expiring, I decided to go ahead and accept it. And not only for that reason, but also because it was on March 17th. And if you remember what happened around March 17th, it was um, a lot of this crazy things beginning to happen and you hearing about it in the news. So seeing that, I, um, I thought, well, this could be an issue with sales and I kind of got scared. I thought, I'm gonna accept this offer. Long story short, $168, I paid $3 for it. It was an amazing sale and I cannot tell you how excited I was to see this when I walked into the thrift store because I remembered from my first one. Let me see how much I made, what's that profit? So $143 and some change was my profit. Again, when I sell things like this, and I think it was shipped to um, China, and so it takes a while to get there, and um, I hold my breath to make sure it gets there okay and that everything's okay, so I wait a few weeks, and then I kind of breathe easier. But they got it, and within a couple of days, gave me positive feedback, so I was super excited, and I knew at that point it was good, and... Um, I celebrated. <laughs> so that was a good sale. So it makes some of these lower dollar sales a little easier to take because then that evens it all out. Okay, sorry that was a long story about that, but I just, I love those little dresses and I get really excited. And the shop is actually in a neighboring town from me, or it used to be, it's closed now, but um, yeah, it used to be in a neighboring town. So 
I feel like I should fall upon those a lot more than I do. However, they did sell all over. I mean, they sold um, on the internet, so people all over bought them. Okay. This is Highlands Homeopathic Hay Fever Tablets, and I grabbed these at the Salvation Army for like a dollar, and I thought my husband might want them because he has bad allergies, and he kind of wasn't interested in it, so I thought I'll just throw them up on eBay. I didn't really see any good comps or anything. Uh, the only listing I saw was out of the UK, I think, so I just thought of a price that I wanted to try to sell it at $19.95 and I put it on there and they sold fairly quickly maybe within a week or so um, for a full price so I was happy with that and since I only paid a dollar I made $16.45 so and that was on the 19th this next item is another thing I've had for forever so this has been happening I've been selling a lot of things that I've had for a while and I'm glad to see them getting to get cleared out so I am taking lower offers um, P.O.L., I don't know where this brand is from. I picked up a tank before and it sold pretty quick on Poshmark. Um, but this was like this really long sleeveless duster. I thought it was kind of cool. So, um, I thought it would sell. I paid $6 for it, which was really too much because I only ended up selling it for $16. Of course, she sent me that offer and I took it. Um, so in the end, I only made like $7.92. So that was not a great sale and I would not pick up that brand again. It's a very soft material though. I'd pick it up for myself like a shirt or something, but not to not to resell. The next sale was Jack Rogers Captiva Boating Sandals and I remember people talking about this brand. So I kind of got excited when I saw them and they were in excellent condition. They were a smaller size. I don't even think they were worn at all. Once I bought them, I think I paid $4 for them, so that wasn't bad. I got them home and I realized the bottom was a foam bottom. And the ones that tend to sell higher have the kind of heel on them and they're wooden. So, and I've heard that these are not as popular as they once were, so they weren't going as much. But I did list them for $35 on Poshmark and didn't really get a whole lot of attention. So on here, I might have sent out offers to interested buyers and sold them for $26, which was still good at the end of the day. So I made $18.62. I don't think I would pick them up again. Um, well, I say that. If I find them again in this great condition and... Um, for cheap enough, then I probably would pick them up again. How, I mean, they're small, so they don't take up a lot of room. Um, however, if they're not the wooden bottoms, I would have to think really long and hard about that. And then even then, I just, they need to be probably in really good condition. Next item that sold, it was a good sale for $28, and they were new with tags, free people, um, and they were distressed, you know, very free people looking. <laughs> Um, they had cute, like, eyelet stuff, a uh, trim on the pockets. Um, they were a size 31. I thought they were going to fly off the shelves, and it didn't. I listed it on Poshmark. It didn't even get a whole lot of attention. I think I listed them for 35 or 40 originally, and they sat for a long time. So when this offer came around for $28, I took it, and I paid, I think I paid $5 for these. Yes. So in the end, I made $19.36, which is still good, but they didn't sell as quick as I thought. And again, I guess free people doesn't because it's oversaturated, like everybody says. But if it's new with tags, I'd like to take a chance on it if the price is right. Okay, I had another great sale. Um, this one was a fun one. I just happened to stop into Goodwill and went through the toy section. And I saw this um, Barbie. It was like a baby baby sister of Barbie. Her name is Chrissy and I found it and it was new in the box and I thought this, I've never seen anything like this before. When I scanned it um, on eBay, I saw that the sold listings were anywhere from 50 to 60 and somewhere even more if it was a different um, package. I think this one was like a swing and then the one with the bathtub was worth more maybe, but I knew it was going to sell well. It was going to be a good pickup and I think they only had $2 marked on it. So I snatched it up really fast, sold for $50. It did sell on promoted listing. So in the end, I made $40.50, which is still fantastic. And I was super excited about that. Okay, a uh, next sale, Vintage Chatham, I think is how you say it, the wool baby blanket. 
And when I picked this up, again, this is another item I have sat on forever. Um, I think I paid $2 for this like two years ago. It's been on eBay ever since. I've tried making the photos look better. I've tried different things. Nothing really worked. In the end, somebody sent me an offer. It was sold on promoted listing. Um, they sent me an offer for $15 and I was like, yes, take it. I'm tired of looking at it. I sold the other one a few months ago um, after I had brightened up the pictures. I had a white one with a cute little print on it and it sold for a little bit more maybe. Um, but this one, I, I was, yeah, I was getting sick of it. So I was glad to sell it for $15. Um, I was picking it. I still have a vintage blanket, like an acrylic one in my shop. And I was picking up more baby blankets like when I first started eBay, like lovies and baby blankets and even vintage blankets. Um, and I thought they were doing better when I first started. Now, the ones that I've picked up within the last year, they're not moving the same. The only one that I would probably pick up now vintage wise is the waffle weave one. The I think it's like acrylic and then um, a satin trim. Those can go for around $50. I think I did pick up one and sold it for that much and it sold pretty quick. But other than that, I'm not going to pick up vintage blankets anymore unless it's those specific waffle weave ones. And you can look up those on eBay. Um, I haven't even found any good lovies lately. I used to find um, like lovies and look them up and they would be going for $20 to $30. And you know you only pay like a buck or two for those. And even lately, the ones I'm finding either it's oversaturated, like tons of people are selling them, so it's bringing the price way down, or um, they're just not selling for very much. So I have not even been doing that as much as I used to. That was a, a thing that I did when I first started. I think it's probably because it becomes oversaturated or I'm just not finding the right ones. Okay, so that was my last sell on eBay, and now we're going to go over to Poshmark and go over what sold there oh i almost forgot i was gonna show you my sweater i got on poshmark because i love purchasing things on poshmark just as much as i like selling but i got this um from mcthriftsy and i'm sure that you know of her she has a youtube channel and is super amazing but i found this in her closet and i thought it was super cute and it's just this little bird embroidered cardigan anyways thought i'd show that because um i was super happy with it Anyways, let's get into what sold on Poshmark. I started out with a sale on the first and it's a bundle sale. And um, it was two items and first item was an O'Neill dress that I picked up at the bins and I think probably had a dollar in that. And then cut from the cloth shorts that I purchased at a little thrift shop. So I paid about $2, so $3 for my cost of goods there. And the lady bundled the two things together and they have been in my closet since the summer. And so I decided I was going to accept whatever she sent. She sent a $22 offer. So it was basically, I think I had them both listed at 22. So it was two for the price of one and it was, I was willing to take that because in the end I still made $14 and 60 cents because I didn't have a lot of money in that sale. So that kicked off my first sale. Then on the second I sold... Oh, I loved this. I was super excited to find this. It was an Anthropology 11Z's um, jumpsuit, um, MAPA jumpsuit. I was able to find the sock photo and it looked really cute on because the pictures that I took did not do it justice. I could not get it to look right and I knew I couldn't model it, um, but it was so cute. And I think I listed it for like 60 or around 60 and it sold for $46 and a shipping discount. So I sent out offers to lacquers and um, it got a lot of attention right away. It did take a couple of weeks to sell, um, but it was a great, a great one. And I think they only charged me $3 for that um, at the thrift store. So I was happy about that. And $31.68 was my profit because I, it's an odd number because I have the shipping discount. Okay, these leggings were by Kalia um, by Carrie Underwood. It's her workout line, and they were very pretty, floral, mostly pink legging, um, great condition. I wasn't going to be sad if they didn't sell because I liked them for myself. Um, somebody sent me an offer for $25, and I accepted that, and I think I paid $4 for these, so I made $16 in the end. I was hoping for around $30 for those, but... Um, I realized that maybe they don't go for as much as I thought they did in the beginning. 
The same with this Lulu Lemon Top, which is my next sale. And this sold on the 4th, and I just let it go for $15, and I probably paid 3 bucks for this, so not a lot in that. Um, and there's a lot out there. So I, I, did, I was hoping to get at least $20, um, but when somebody offered me $15, I took it and made $9. So not a great sale. Would I still pick up Lululemon tops in the future? I don't know. I mean, I still made $9 off of it, but it sat for a little bit. So I guess it just really depends, depends on how much it costs and the size. Because this one was a 10, and so I thought it would sell for a little better, but it still sat. The next sale was a new with tags cabby top, and I picked this up at a Goodwill. They had it marked up because it still had the tag on it. So it was like $5. Um, and I know tank tops, it's hard to ask for a lot for these, even though I had it listed $30. I think I sent out offers to lacquers like a percentage off. So she accepted it was $21 was the offer. Um, so in the end, I made $11.80. So it was okay. I probably had that listed a couple of months. Um, you know, I missed, I listed it in the winter time, so... <laughs> The next sale was just some cute shoes I bought for um, my daughter's party. She had a fiesta themed party and I thought these kind of look, would look cute. Um, and so I only wore them one time. I bought them new off Poshmark. Wore them one time. Um, they were just not something I was going to wear a lot. So I decided to turn around and sell them. So I obviously didn't make my money back on those. So that's included in just the money I got back, but not the, you know actual total of profit. Uh, these were so cute and they were Ted Baker and they were this dark floral and I snagged them at, at uh, the Goodwill just as soon as I saw them. I had no idea what brand they were. I just saw them sitting on the shelf and I was like, I want these and I saw they were at my size and um, I put them in the cart and I looked at the back and it had a T and, and then I looked inside and I was like, oh, this is Ted Baker. That's good. I didn't even look up comps because I wanted them for myself, but when I got home, I actually tried them on and they had been stretched out to like a wide foot. I think they had gotten wet or something and stretched out because the fabric was kind of hard. So I made sure I like listed that and told the buyer that they were wider and that they had gotten wet and were kind of like, um, I don't know, like stiff maybe. And maybe they were made that way, but that was just like my guess is what happened. So I didn't list them for a whole lot. Um, so when this buyer offered me 25, I think I listed them for 30. I took it and I made $15. So it was still a good sale, but I really wanted them for myself. This next sale, this was a fantastic sale and a quick sale. Um, the Ted Baker shoes were also a, a pretty quick sale, but these were Birkenstock Betula, I guess is how you say it. And they were like black leather clogs. And I found these in a brown suede leather one at the same time at my local thrift. And I was surprised they did not have them marked up. And I think either they're not super familiar with Birkenstocks or they didn't know they were Birkenstocks. Um, they're starting to price things higher there. So I'm thinking because it said Betula in the footbed, they didn't realize they were Birkenstocks and didn't have them marked up. But $5 is what I paid. And then they sold for $45. So in the end, I got $31 profit. And I was super excited about that. This stranded... Uh, T was stranded was the brand. It's a star burnout graphic tee and I just thought it was cute and it had a star on it So I thought it somebody would like it and would do well and I think I paid three dollars for this top and I bought it this summer and it sat for quite some time So I was ready to kind of see it go. So they offered me twelve dollars and in the end I only got six dollars out of it. So Not a great sale It's not I don't think it was a good brand either and then I was just really hoping somebody would bundle it with something and then it would work out but glad to see it gone next sale was the Dolce Vita tan suede grommet sandals and I purchased these at the half off sale in um, a thrift store I went to in Dallas I think it was at the Texas thrift and I do a haul video for that so I can link that if you're interested in seeing that haul I got a lot of shoes that time so I got these there and I want to say I probably paid like three bucks for them. I think I sent offers and she accepted my offer for $24. So 
So I made $14.08 in the end. This next sale was um, a surprise sale for me. It was some cabby light denim boyfriend um, style jeans and they had rips and stuff and although I thought they were cute and they were trendy I've heard that cabbie is just not doing that well. So um, I got them anyways because they were from the bins so it wasn't like I paid very much so probably a dollar and a half since um, they probably weighed a pound but they somebody just came in and bought them for full price. I didn't have hardly any likes, maybe a few, so it wasn't even a lot of attention, but somebody, maybe they were their favorite jeans and they needed to replace them and they came in and they bought them from me and I was super happy um, when I, I think I woke up to that sale, so super excited about that. So I made like $26.50. Whenever you can buy something at the bins and turn around for a good $30, then it's a great sale. This next dress, I was hoping to get a lot more because I've seen some comps that were pretty high, like around the $80 mark. Um, so I kind of had high hopes for this one. I did pay over $7 for it at um, a thrift shop that I would really like to try to go to. It's about an hour from me. I go if I'm passing through that area. Um, but they do price things a little higher. So I paid like over, I want to say, their prices are weird. I want to say it was $7.53. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember, but that's about the price. Um, anyways, equipment, it's a brand I think sold at Nordstrom. I've picked up a dress from them before and it was also of silk, so that must be a common thing for them. This had this really bright floral print and I thought that made it rare and maybe that's why it had some good comps for it. So I listed it and again, I guess I listed it in the middle of winter, so I shouldn't have expected it for sell that quick, but somebody sent me an offer. Um, she sent me an offer for like $30. I think I sent out offers to lacquers, first of all. Then she sent me an offer for like $30 and I countered and then she countered and then I countered and we went back and finally she sent me an offer of $43 and I kind of thought about it for a while and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to move it out. I still made a $27 profit and um, I hope she likes it. <laughs> Next sale was for some Lululemon um, cropped capris. I was surprised I found these at my local Goodwill. I don't find a lot of Lululemon, um, so I was excited to come across them. I think I found them at my local thrift store. Somebody sent me an offer on these, I think is what it was, and I accepted for $28 and I only paid $4, so I made $18.40. So they were still a good sale. The next sale, I also was kind of sad that these didn't go for more. I sold these on the 19th, though. Um, they were Everlane high-rise jeans. I came into a Goodwill, and I was kind of looking around, and they had pulled out a rack with some jeans on it, and I was flipping through, and I saw the tag, and I've never picked these up before, and I thought, I know this name. I remember that, and then there were some Topshop ones that were also a high-rise, really cute, and both the same size. I'm assuming the same person donated them. So I grabbed them both because the comps were great. I thought they were going to sell for about $40. Um, however, somebody offered me $30 and I went ahead and accepted it. So I made $19 because I paid five or six, five. I wrote five down. Okay, next sale. So super excited. Brought these, you know, um, when I found these at the Goodwill, the same place I bought the equipment dress. Um, they were only listed for $6. I couldn't believe they hadn't marked them up. Um, but I grabbed them and I like did my research, made sure they were authentic because I was kind of nervous about that. I wore them to church once and then decided, you know what, I'd rather sell them. I listed them for over a hundred. Um, and they had a lot of attention, of course. And I sent out, I waited a while to send out offers. And then I eventually sent out offers and I didn't get any bites. And then she sent me an offer for $85. And I slept on it. Um, even though um, I didn't pay more than $6 for them, I just didn't want to let them go for lower than what I thought they were worth. However, given the fact that all that was going on in the world, it was the 21st, and um, I didn't pay that much. I was like, you know, Christy, just don't be greedy. Just pass those sandals, those shoes on. Somebody's going to love them. So I made $62 off of them. So I cannot complain about it. But that was my first time to find them. And I don't, I don't know if I'll ever come across them again. 
Next sale was Lucky Brand beaded sandals. These were really cute flip flops and I actually paid $8 for these at the thrift store because I wanted them for myself. And then I wore them a couple times but they didn't fit me right so they were uncomfortable and so I decided to sell them. I think I listed them for $25 um, and then sent offers possibly. So I only got $6 profit off of them but they weren't originally purchased for resale. So that's okay. The next sale was a bundle of two things. Now, this pair of shoes was Saba Tan Flats. They were like these loafers that were made in Turkey and they were really unique. And I we went to, um, where was it? Tulsa, Oklahoma. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma for my daughter's dance competition. And it was really late at night after her awards were over and I was like, let's swing by Goodwill and check it out. And they were having half off all their shoes and they only had 30 minutes till closing. And I just kind of went through the suit, shoe section and I saw these and I thought these are different, unique, and they look like good quality leather. So I looked them up and sure enough, they were selling for anywhere from 60 to $90 on eBay. So I snatched them up and I think I only paid like three bucks for them. So I listed them for $90 just to kind of see where we get. And even on like eBay, they started getting watchers because um, I thought they would actually sell there first. Anyways, she bundled that in these really cute anthropology orange like linen pants. And she asked, um, she sent me a message and asked if I would take $90 in free shipping. And I said, yes, I, I'll do that. Um, and so I was glad to sell two things and, um, that was still a good price, even though it was for two items because in the end, so I probably paid $3 for those pants and $3 for those shoes. So it was in for $6. So in the end I made $58 and 89 cents on that bundle. So I was happy with that. This was a surprising sale. This was a men's vintage Janelli silk nautical shirt. I bought this quite some time ago, over a year probably, had it listed on eBay. I actually thought it would sell there, but I just wanted to cross list it to Poshmark and see. Um, but I always thought it would sell on eBay. And so I got a full price offer um, on Poshmark. These, if you look at comps on eBay, you can see there's kind of a wide range, but the really different ones can go for a lot more this brand. Um, and again, vintage, you have to have the right buyer, but somebody scooped it up and I was excited. I think I paid three or four bucks for that. So my profit was $33. Okay, this Ann Taylor top, it was a loft top and it was kind of a polka dotted blouse and I only paid a dollar at a garage sale and I bought this back this last summer, like when I first started Poshmark because I've heard Ann Taylor does well, but I don't really think that that's the case. Um, this is another example of you've got to check your own comps most of the time because if you just listen to like um, what people are picking up in their thrift hauls or um, what people say is good, it doesn't always translate for you. So maybe one person has a whole lot of luck with loft. Maybe they know exactly what kind to pick up to where I was just picking it up because it was a dollar and it was anterior loft. Um, maybe it was an older style. Maybe it wasn't a certain thing that people are looking for in this brand. Just know the specifics. Always check your comps for yourself. And this is a prime example of that. It sat for a while, sold for $10 and I was fine because I only paid a dollar and I was glad to see it go. So in the end, I only made like $6 and some pennies on that. Here's the other Birkenstock Betula um, clogs I bought. These were in fantastic condition. In fact, better condition than the black ones. Um, these didn't go for as much and I don't know if maybe just the leather ones are more popular than the suede. But I think uh, somebody sent me an offer on these and I, since I paid $5, I accepted the offer of $30 and made $19. So that was a good sale. These next jeans, I actually, um, I was glad to sell them for $22. I think she sent me an offer. I did pay $5 for these at the beginning of my Poshmark journey. So I probably paid five or $6 dollars um, because I had heard AG does well, Adriano Goldschmidt. And again, that's another thing that I probably didn't look up comps, the Angel and their boot cut. So it was a hard sell and it took forever to sell them. Um, and they sold for $22 rather than, you know, the 35 that I thought that they were gonna sell for. So I only made like $12 off of those, which is not horrible, but, um, I won't pick up that style again. I have some other AG jeans that are like a buttery, soft, skinny jean that I think will do well. Um, but I don't know about that boot cut. 
All right, this next sale was a quick sale and I almost didn't list it right away because I bought this um, based on the brand because I showed you the jumpsuit that sold for $46. It was Elevensies and this was also the brand Elevensies. So, it, and it was at the Salvation Army, so I only paid like $3 for this, but I thought it was a dress and um, then I found the stock photos when I finally decided to list it and it was actually just a vest that it was styled just with some pants and a top. But I styled it on a mannequin like a dress and then showed that it could be worn as both because it could totally. It was long enough. But when I looked up comps, there was a ton for sale and they even had smalls for sale for like 25 or so dollars. And the comps, the sole comps weren't super great. So I kind of thought, well, I made the listing and left it in drafts and I was like, I'm not going to list this right away because there's too many available for sale. Um, and it's just going to sit. And then like two days later, I was like, you know, they were doing love it or list it challenge. I'm going to just go ahead and just throw it up there and we'll see what happens. And it sold really quick for $30 and I was super excited. Um, so I made $21 off that sale. So that was a great sale. So that goes to show you, you know what? It can't sell if you don't list it and you don't know <laughs> if you don't try. And that's a prime example. Here's another example of something I was unsure about, but it's these champion white sneakers. I saw them at the Goodwill and I know that that brand is popular right now. Um, especially with like the high school kids that I was teaching, they're starting to wear it a lot. They got back from Christmas and all of a sudden there's champion everywhere. That's the thing. So I bought these sneakers off of just hoping that it worked out because the high school kids were wearing it. I couldn't really find comps. I think I'd found a couple on eBay and they were pretty low, like 15 to $20. So I didn't have super high hopes. Um, I think I listed these for 30 and she offered me 25 and I accepted. So I paid $5 for them. I made 15 bucks in the end and they didn't take too long to sell, like a month or so. Um, but yeah, that was one of those things that I just was unsure about and, um, took a chance and it worked out. Doesn't always work out like that, but this did and I was glad um, that she liked them. So that's it. That concludes all my sales for the month of March. And like I said, um, again, my profit for Poshmark was $4.73 and 60 cents and eBay was $4.06 and 19 cents for a total of $8.79 and 79 cents plus the two sales of items that I had around the house that I just got money back on. So I made $42. Um, profit just really just getting my money back for those items so over nine hundred dollars not the double the money that I wanted from the previous month I was hoping to make sixteen hundred um, so I'm a little off on that but you know what like I said with everything going on I'm giving myself a little grace I know this video was kind of long because I was going off on a lot of tangents and talking about a lot of stuff so hopefully you stuck with me to the end. I think that there's a lot to learn and seeing what sold videos um, from other resellers to kind of learn from my mistakes and um, what took too long to sell and for not much money that maybe I thought was good and then some um, be on the lookout for items that sold quickly and for good money. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you stuck with me to the end. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And let me know below if your sales have been doing okay since this whole pandemic started. I, I've been pleasantly surprised um, with how it's been going. And April has proved to be um, pretty good as well so far. So anyways, I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.